Hey, what's up, and welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 6, Episode 6. Today we're talking about Evil Dead Trap from 1988, directed by Toshiharo Ikeda. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Welcome to the dumpster. So, Joe. Yeah? It's not the Evil Dead. It's the Evil Dead trap. Yes. Uh, You're trapped by the Deadites, right? I, uh, just in time, kind of, for Evil Dead Rise, kind of. Uh, afterwards, yeah. Yes, this yes. episode was supposed to come out sooner yeah. than, than, than later, and we're at the later stage, but it's still poignant and acceptable. Yes, <laughs> and it's also something we've talked about covering for many years, so yes. regardless, I'm very excited to talk about what this do you, film. Do you have a fucking mouse in your pocket? Yes, I took your joke. <laughs> You're still bitter about that. Go check out the Garbage Pail Kids episode to understand that reference. I'm just busting your balls. And yes, we have been talking about this one for a while. This one, well, we'll get to that in a yes. second. But first, just want to let you know if you want more Movie Dumpster content, including an ad-free audio version of the show, you can head over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster and support the show for just as little as $2 a month. And for no money at all, if you're watching this video on YouTube, leave a uh, like on it and share it with your friends. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, leave us five stars and, uh, you know, get the word out. Get us out of the dumpster into more eardrums, eyeballs, and everything in between. Oh, yeah, man. You got to grow that dumpster community, baby. Absolutely. And if you're looking for more updates on the show or what we got coming up, always head over to those socials. At Movie Dumpster on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. But yeah, so for this episode, we're going to try a couple little different things, Yeah, um, as you will see as we go. And uh, with that being said, let's get into some Evil Dead trap. Yes. Let's start from the, let's start from the top with this. Okay. Um, is, is the top Sam Raimi? Is, yeah. is that the joke? Is, <laughs> no. it, is Bruce Campbell's head? <laughs> no, actually, I was going to say uh, how, how we discovered this film oh, yeah. and like... Uh, how we shared how we shared it as kids, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, this is the Synapse uh, Extreme Horror, uh, excuse me, Asian Cult Cinema Extreme Horror Collection that they had dropped in two thousand five, which was the year we graduated. Um, well, that I graduated. He did. Him and his mouse. Yes, me and the mouse. <laughs> um, so so Synapse had put these films that are in this set out individually in okay. 2000 and then they did a box set in 2005. However, I bought the box set. Now, I mm. bought the box set specifically because I wanted Entrails of a Virgin and I wanted Entrails of a Beautiful Woman, which were two um, Japanese uh, films that I was after. Okay. Uh, they're like infamously, like almost like the guinea pig stuff type style movies. Are you familiar I, with guinea pig? I don't know. Guinea pig are like, it's like extreme gore okay. movies, right? Low budget Asian horror. Sure, cinema. like that's basically what that is. Okay. Yeah. Um, we might talk about those eventually at some okay. point. Um, but uh, in the set came with with uh, uh, entrails of a virgin and entrails of a beautiful woman are organ and evil dead. Trap. I remember organ. Uh, we're not covering that, but that's a very <laughs> weird splatter body horror movie. For what sure. a fucking weird movie organ is. And there was a time where uh, I grabbed this and Sean and I busted through this whole collection. Yes. And this was my first exposure to Evil Dead Trap. I had never, Same. I had never heard of it. I, uh, I never saw it. I think until Synapse put out the DVD, you could not get Evil Dead Trap uh, in the in the U.S. like in the U with with subtitles and shit. Probably not. I mean, obviously there was VHS tapes out there of different films in that that genre or subgenre, Asian horror. Well, uh, the, J Japan had the VHS, but yeah, it was a Japanese yeah. VHS. Well, I'm, I'm saying specifically around that time, 2000, early 2000s is when a lot of that stuff finally got out to the to the states. Yeah. And we got all that stuff on DVD, whether it was through Synapse or at your local you know, video store. You were like, holy shit, I couldn't get this 10 years it ago. It was the big boom, dude. You had Synapse. Anime you had, even, too. You had Code Red. You had Synapse. You had, um, oh, what was the other one? There's a bunch of them. Uh. I don't want to say on Ho Home Video Express. Uh, Home Video Express was serving it to you, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah, sure was. But we didn't have all these. Th those were our boutique sure. labels at the time. You know what I mean? And Synapse is one of the OGs. Um, and they put out such great content. And they put out a lot of like Frank Hennelotter stuff that uh, was priceless at the time. That's when we watched. When we, the first time you saw yeah. Brain Damage was on a Synapse disc. Oh, yeah. Um. So, yeah. So, we're watching all these movies. And we get to Evil Dead Trap. Now, I, we had never heard about it. And we're like, what the fuck? Evil Dead Trap? Like. Is this like a ripoff or or what's the deal here? Right. Um. Turns out 
that Evil Dead trap was just the stateside name for it. Oh. It's not even the real name. We'll get into That's that. That's a little surprising to me because of stuff we may talk about because there's definitely some Evil Dead homages in this film, or it feels like it at least. Yeah, the the original Japanese title, I'm going to butcher this. I'm very, I'm not, if you saw our Ultraman episode, I'm not very good at this. You're but trying. that's that's You're the trying. joke. Uh Shiryo Niwana, which translates into the book of the De- Necronomicon. No, that's not what happened. Uh it, the, the trap of the dead spirits. Okay. So I think that's kind of in line with it because the Kandarian demons, they possess people, and this has a spirit kind of ghost sort of. Mm. Not really, but well, okay. Well, we'll get to it and we'll kind of bust that down. But um where was I going with that? Uh, yeah, we didn't know what to expect. So we, so we popped it in and we watched this and like the whole movie was great. Sure. But then like when that fucking third act <laughs> happens, we were just yeah. like, oh my God. Like, I, Yeah, that's the same reaction I had the other day when I rewatched it for the yeah. first time in like 15 years. And I was like, oh, I forgot about this. Oh my God. I knew it was coming, but I was like. I, I, oh, I completely forgot. I knew it was coming, but like I didn't, I couldn't remember. Because I hadn't watched. Like the semantics of it maybe? Yeah, I okay. haven't watched it in a very long time. Sure. Um, so, so yeah, that was, that was a fun time that, that's, we kind of, this is another one of those movies that we kind of like bonded over and, and, and watched. Yes, absolutely. So, so yeah, so we have the, the Synapse, uh, DVD right here and mm. then Unearth Films actually just released a Blu-ray not too long ago. Yeah, I, I don't know the exact release on this, but it's, yeah. it's a very great, uh, transfer. Yeah. They, they did the second one also. Yeah. Okay. Do you, you want to talk about those? I haven't actually watched them yet. I know that the second one, I mean, it's. I guess it's a little bit of a spoiler, but unless we explain the spoiler, you won't know it's a spoiler, but I know it's involving Hideki. But I don't know to what extent, and I know that's a different cast beyond that element. Uh, but it's also, they also did a, a, a transfer Blu-ray of it. Okay, or so... Blu-ray transfer, I guess I would say. So there's two sequels. Right. One, The third one, the original creator came back for, but the second one, he yes. did not. Yes, now here's the thing. It's... It's one of those deals where it has nothing to do with this movie. Oh, uh, not The second holy? one has nothing to do with this one, and the th- third one has nothing to do with the previous two. Weird. Yeah. It, it's like that in-name only thing, I guess, to sell it in the like States. Like a deadly spawn kind of thing, but like actually having the right people attached in some way. Like It's not like Ridley Scott was ever attached to deadly spawn. I, I don't really know. Hmm. Uh, there's not... It, it's The information's uh, scarce. For these, that is for these also flicks. part of this, and 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 somebody's going to be in the comments like, "Oh, you fucking idiot! You didn't know that it came out and night this whatever." Yeah, no, it's like sure. I don't know everything, dude. I mean, I, to your point though, like yeah. unless you're really familiar with these actors, like if you've if you're heavy into eighties uh, horror or Japanese, Japanese cinema, specifically. maybe you know some of these actors. But yeah, we're coming at this again. Saw it ten or fifteen years back, whenever that was, back in the early two thousands. And uh, I'm not. I, a- I, I can't remember all these people's names. Sorry. And then when you look it up on IMDb, they don't have pictures. Yeah. Wikipedia, half of them don't even like. It seems like they don't even exist. So it's like, I guess this. They say this is the, the actor playing the character. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot. I know a lot of shit. No, but I'm not. Too. I'm not me the too. authority on anything. Same. Right. You know what I mean. So um, I'm sure there's some other blogger or some kind of archivist or some kind of Japanese horror <laughs> cinema fucking yeah, snob probably, somewhere. Actually. Uh, that knows all the yeah. shit, but I don't, and I don't. Frankly, I don't need to. But sure, I mean, you know, if there's something interesting that you know about it that we don't, let us know for yeah. sure. I mean, and share the knowledge exactly because we love the the trivia yeah. and talking about the special effects. But when it's hard to find anything, the, there is actually a documentary that I didn't watch on this Blu-ray. Uh, I watched like the first minute of it, and I didn't get beyond that. So maybe that goes into it more. Maybe oh, that's something to check out. See, you got the Blu-ray. I didn't. I only had my sure. uh, my DVD copy, and there's no documentary on this. It's just, it's just the movie with the you know the Japanese language and the subtitles. And I think there's like trailers and shit. I think there's an audio commentary. Yeah, I mean it's called Trappings of the Dead, reflecting yeah. on a Japanese cult classic. So I don't know how much of a documentary it is if it's kind of like that stepfather uh, Blu-ray I oh, talked about yeah. last year. See, where I didn't get to see that interviews either. and like it might be something like that, like cool, but not like a ton of new information. I don't know. I'm, I might watch it between now and when this episode comes out. But... I mean, I definitely want to check it out. I, I, I mean, they got some cool stuff on this. I mean, I did, again, I didn't really go deep into this, but they have like director commentaries and stuff on there but i didn't dig through any of that sure and and i definitely want to check that out myself so there's two sequels right yeah get to, to get okay, back so to unearth yeah. put out put did put out uh evil dead trap to uh hideki incredible art i'm imagining the transfer is just as good as this one but um, I, I can't confirm 
Now I haven't seen either of the films, but if they're anything like this film in terms of the quality of the film, I'm sure they're a good time. They just don't really have anything to do with it. Yeah. It's even called something completely different. Um, the third one is literally in name only. Like you have uh, that you have the Hideki like attachment to the second to the to the sequel yeah, yeah, of this, yeah. but it's more about the second movie is more like Malignant. Right. Well, we were. T- I may. I don't know if we want to really go deep into malignant right this second because right, right. it might be relevant. No, 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 but- no. But I just want to put that into perspective sure. for the for the yeah. listeners and and right because we were you. you know behind the scenes BTS for Johnny Blue out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were talking about that a little before the show. Yeah. It might be relevant soon, sooner than later. On this there episode. are parallels to this first one, but it's a it's a completely different story in the second one. And I think sure. again, I think they tacked it on to make it. No, like yeah, a, I can a, see that a spiritual successor, but the third one has nothing to do huh. with either That's of them. That's kind of interesting. To um, me. It's called it's called Broken Love Killer. Yeah, it's kind of like the the troll movies. Yeah, uh, well, when right. you when you when you you know you have John Carl Beekler's Troll right, classic, the two. classic 1986 yeah. classic, and then you have Troll Two directed by um, Claudio Fergasso or Fergasso, I'm pretty sure. Um, that movie has nothing to fucking right. do with that first movie. The goblin, who are the goblins? Wow. You know, it's a whole thing. Good movie in its own right, nah, yeah. or fun movie in its own right, but has nothing to do with the class, the original. Oh no, yeah, movies. I got you. Yeah. Um, and then of course, Crawlers and Quest for the Mighty Sword, which are three and four, Troll three and four. But anyway, oh, just real quick, I want let me put the fucking needle back for uh, for uh, Evil Dead Trap okay. Two. Um, it's directed by Izo Hashimoto, who directed Akira. Oh, really? Which I thought was pretty neat. It's like, gotta be at least decent, then, right? I've never seen it. I'm sure it's. I'm sure it's. I mean, I don't know. Like animation to live action. Let's see. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, if they could translate some of the body horror from Akira into uh, into Evil Dead Trap Two, which would make sense based on this first film, uh, sure. But you're right. Yeah, it is a very different medium. So you're right. Tashiharo comes back for. Evil Dead, Evil Dead Trap Three. Right, he directs. I don't know if he writes or anything. Um, it, again, like I said, it's called Broken Love Killer, but the direct translation of the original title, the title is Oh yeah, uh, Chigireta. I, man, I'm really not Chigireta. I know Satsujin, the brutal love of insanity. Okay, so it's probably a good movie, but it has nothing to do with these movies. It's worth me looking into one day, but okay, fine. So I want to talk a little bit about Tashihara real quick, the director. He directs one episode of Chosujin Gorensaiza, which is the Ultra Star God series, which is uh, Toho and Konami's answer to Toei's uh, Super Sentai and Kamen Rider. Oh. So they're like trying to compete with that sure. for, for the for the uh, Tokusatsu uh, stuff or the uh, the um, the Henshin stuff. Sure, you yeah. Know? But he also does. He also directs some Pinky Violence stuff too. Which I saw I, that. Which I thought was pretty cool, and I was like, oh, that, that kind of lines up with a lot of shit in this movie um, that we'll talk about. Um, he, he also straight up, I think, as the way Wikipedia described it, is he worked on pink films, pink which are films. Japanese softcore porn films. Basically, yeah. Uh, so, which, which there was only a couple that linked to anything, and I was like, okay, that's interesting tra- uh, career trajectory. Well, yeah, and the Angel Guts films, we'll talk yeah. about that those in a second. I saw that too, yeah. But uh, Pinky Violence... Specifically, like Girl Boss Mafia Lynch, and uh, he did a, a Prisoner Scorpion. What was it? Prisoner Scorpion. Like a Japanese spin on that? No, Prisoner Scorpion. Oh yeah, duh. Death Threat. The the original. Uh, the seventies. Right, we were talking Prisoner about that Scorpion on the Thriller movies. episode. Yeah, they're yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. awesome. So those are like else. so those are Pinky Violence co- movies, and again, like you said, the Pinky films are softcore porns, but there's also a lot of violence in them. Right, and these ones specifically are like rape revenge type huh. movies. Those specifically, right, like, right, right, like the and like the delin- mentioned, yeah. like delinquent girl boss and and like the other Prisoner Scorpion movies we were talking about. Okay, so I thought that was interesting, and I thought that was kind of cool, and you can feel those vibes running through that, like it's kind of dripping mm. with that. Also, it feels like that because of the writer Takashi Ishii, who wrote all of the Angel Guts movies. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. He wrote them all, and I and uh, uh, Tashiharo did one of those, I think. Okay. Now, I, I'm only familiar with the name, but I'm guessing those are just hyper violent or something to that effect. They're like they're softcore movies, like you said, but they deal with like some of them. Some of them have like dominate, like BDSM kind of things, like undercover cops. Oh, uh, it's like part of Red Shoe Diary type or things going on. Okay, you know what I mean. Um. Also with extreme violence and stuff. Sure, like that. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So the effects are done by Sinichi Wakasa, and he does a ton of the uh, Godzilla suits uh, from the Heisei and Millennium era. My favorite errors. 
Hey, look, I totally... I, I've tried so hard to like the early <laughs> stuff. I've really tried. I'm not trying to be a curmudgeon on Godzilla here. I love it, but I just... Those movies are so hard for me to return to. Look, man, I totally get it. Like, I totally get the sentiment with that. And, like, if you don't have... For somebody who doesn't have, like, super built-in nostalgia for those I mean, I kind of do, but ones. not not as much as you, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I, Which is surprising, because your your dad loves Godzilla. I, I, I like it a lot. It's just, I don't know. Not to uh, not to deviate <laughs> into that, but you sure that's cool trivia that he worked on those. Yeah, well, he also did Ultraman and he did uh, Gamera to attack oh, of the, of the cool. Legion. Yeah, did he do was... Gamera? I'm assuming. I, I don't know. Uh, oh. He worked on the suits, the monster suits. So I'm assuming. Yeah, that's, all of that that's cool. Stuff. Yeah, and the Rebirth of Mothra series he did too. Ah. Uh. So he was in charge of that exploding Godzilla and that little baby <laughs> Godzilla in Destroyer. I suppose. Yes, he absolutely. That's he, he really was. There you go. Yeah, there Some you go. of the bangers. Yes, and before we jump in. In, I want to talk yeah. about the music because I really love the music. We can talk a little bit more about the music as the episode yeah, goes yeah. on and how it applies to the film. But uh, uh, Tomohiko Kira does the score here, and he did the soundtrack for the second Bomberman sixty four game, <laughs> which I thought was pretty interesting. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you want to you want to fucking give a give a uh, give a quick plot crunch of this? <laughs> sure, <laughs> do it. I mean, there's not really a ton to this film, and I don't no. mean to say that to undermine anything here. Cause it's there's it's, a lot, actually is a lot happening. It's more visually striking than anything. Yeah, it, basically the setup is some crazy motherfucker uh, sends a a torture tape, a snuff film. Uh, yeah, to a TV station to this uh, woman specifically Nami who has a late night show, and is like, hey, here's how you get here. They don't actually say anything in the video. It's all visual. You see how they get there. And she sees the woman dead. And it's like, oh, we need to fucking go there and figure out what happened. She takes her team of fellow uh, female news uh, uh, associates. And they they bring their friend Kondo. I, I forget what his job is. But he goes with them as a bodyguard slash driver. They just con him into it. Yeah, yeah. They, they talk <laughs> him into it. Uh, I mean, you, there's other reasons why he may have gone. you find out. But anyway. Well. They, it's in this old factory. And surprise, they end up starting getting picked off by some mysterious person. Mm. And there may be some, uh, I was going to say spiritual or supernatural elements to this, but it's 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 kind of just in the air. It's not entirely clear till the end of the film. And uh, you kind of follow these characters as they're, they're butchered one by one. And then we kind of end up with our final girl. And uh, you get the big twist reveal at the end. And uh, the rest a, is kind of history banger. without yeah. just saying it. Yeah, it's a banger. Yeah. So, yeah, we have Late Night with Nami. She's shooting right next to Pete Bankman's uh, <laughs> show. Yeah, yeah. It that, comes on that, after. It comes on right after Bassmasters. They yeah. have that guy standing off stage with that that skinless uh, Chihuahua <laughs> ready to fucking, hand it off. The Sphinx cat. Yeah, weird. Yeah. So, like you said, uh, she gets a, she gets this VHS, and the way that this is shot, by the way, it's very. It has this very artistic air about this whole movie. If I if I had to compare it to anything or make the comparison it's it feels like Sukamoto directed a giallo mm. movie oh yeah well, i mean that's why i wore the suspiria shirt yeah, for yeah. the episode because it just it, it really does feel like a japanese giallo yeah. toshiharo's influence is very argent you can feel it <sighs> like he's All trying over, man but like it he, has the lighting is about the only thing he didn't steal from argento i mean it's used throughout but it's not like our gender words every room it's like blasting in the face which I love I'm I think just it, saying I that's think the only thing he didn't steal I think it might have went a little <laughs> bit over the top if it was that but yeah, yeah. the way the way that he uses light in this or the cinematographer he does, rather though. and um, the feeling of it has this very like 80s slasher Mixed oh, yeah. with a mixed with like an Argento style giallo. Argento slasher, yeah. the Dutch angles out the ass. Oh yeah, there's a lot of great camera moves in this uh, movie. The music, like you said, I, I we're gonna do it a little bit more, like you had said a little in the intro there. But uh, the music, the, int the the theme is very good. But they play incessantly in this film, and and they they definitely kind of uh, <laughs> set the audience up for when you know something's gonna happen, or at least to try to make you think something's happening, which is. Honestly, a little hard to accomplish, so I got to give the movie props for this, but they'll add like an extra chord over the soundtrack, or it'll be like the next verse, and you're like, whoa, the tension's ratcheting up. The character doesn't know yet, but they played that second verse. You better watch out, Joe. <laughs> when the, when that soft piano's on, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's like, it, it reminds me of like the guitar in like Deep Red. The Deep Red, yeah. Burn with the crystal plumage comes that, to mind. Yeah, that's what it feels like, but then all of a sudden, when like the full orchestration comes in, it mm. sounds like that fucking 90s song, and all around the world, and <laughs> La, 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 la. I was going to say a little like <laughs> opera, but yeah, that does. You're right. <laughs> Dude, it fucking sounds it, like it. Does, like you could like does. literally sync the fucking lyrics to that sure. song and it'll, it'll work. That's the way theirs goes. Ours goes. 
Uh, but yeah, she gets the tape. It's very disturbing. It's this woman being tortured who we don't ever totally find who it is. It's implied it might be his mother, but I feel like that's just like him seeing women that look like the mother and victimizing them, I think, is the implication, right? My thing, yes. It, it's it's a real like Ted Bundy situation going on. Right, because I guess we didn't even say this. I, the literal opening is this disembodied voice on a computer watching her show. Yeah. And he's like in this room, and again, it feels very like Sukamoto yeah. with like the lighting and everything. And you have the the two voice thing is introduced instantly, and you don't really know what it is yet. No, you think okay, there's a little kid there, maybe there's a woman behind them and yeah. telling them dinner's ready, Hideki. Yeah, because you hear the th- three different voices, and really? the way that culminates at the end is pretty great. It's, it's great. I just want to mention that because it's important to the setup. But you're sure, right. Then 100%. she does get that tape, and it's like, holy shit, some woman just got butchered. Oh my god, this the fu- eyeball, dude, shook. this fucking tape. This is. <laughs> Tony, this is one for the ages, bud. Okay, <laughs> Th- this might even be worse than I think. This is worse than Thriller, oh, thriller. Cool Picture, man. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. There, was, it's hard to look up Thriller. At least we could find some information about what that really was. It this was a is, dead body or something. Yes, but this is definitely a special effect, and they do not shy away. And again, the use of the the use of the angles on this is and fucking awesome because it. because somebody is being abused POV style. A big time. And there's like a there's like a shot. This is all like on a grainy VHS tape, by yeah. the way, which makes it even more unsettling. Um there's like the guy stabs the woman and like oh, yeah. cuts her up. But the fucking eye, man, <laughs> it it you see the point like the camera's riding the point of this thing. It's so well shot. And it goes like right in no cutaways, just right into the fucking eye and all this shit fucking comes out. And they out. do like one of these up the eye. Dude, when they sl- like you're like, oh my god, that's horrible. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, ah, it keeps going and it fucking slits her eyelid and then pulls out. And yeah. then that cut between the effect and the real life was done oh, wow. really well. That's what I was gonna say, because yeah. that's an amazing cut back and forth between yeah. Nami watching it and the zoom in on her and the zoom in on the actual eye getting pierced. It's it's yeah. the editing in this movie is a fucking masterclass. And I have like if I really true. wanted to nitpick it, I could, but it's just so well edited. I, I think so. To the music, to the what's happening on screen. It just it it's kind of the tenement of every good horror movie on mm-hmm. some level where the editing, like, I feel like a lot of people don't talk about that, but it's like, if it's done well, you might not think about it, or if it's bad, you can't not think about it, but yeah. this is just, it, it's fucking really well done, and again, those camera angles, the music, it all comes together, like, perfectly. And this is only the first five minutes of the fucking movie. Already, right, yeah. And, yeah. and it's just like, okay, you know what we've you're We've seen in nothing for. yet. Yeah, and it, well, <laughs> we've seen a lot and nothing yeah. at the same time. I mean, I guess that's true. Uh, So, so yeah, so Nami puts together... Uh, the female news team. The a female news team, yeah, and it's uh, it's Mako, the photographer, right? Ray, don't know what she does, but she's she's the uh, the floozy of the group, <laughs> apparently. Uh, Ria, Ria, that's not confusing, but no. people and have similar names. She's the more conservative girl of the group. She's and, the chicken shit. Yeah, the stereotypical. I need to get the fuck. <laughs> she, she's uh, what's his face from uh, Night of the Demons? Uh, Raj. Raj. Yeah. She's like, as soon as something bad happens, she's. I mean, it's a legitimately bad thing, but dude, she's like, I'm out, dude. She gets it the worst, man. Like real bad. That's yeah. Um, and, and then, then Kondo is and then the Kondo, other guy. Yeah. yeah. Or Kondu. It's spelled Kondo. Kondu. I call Kondo. I think it's Kondu. Um, and then Nami, of course. And then Nami is the, the main chick, yeah. There's also a TV producer who's just like has literally one scene and then is never seen again. I kind of love it too, because she <laughs> she has like this this uh she has this late night television show which yeah. is akin to like uh you know like some Tony Pope shit. Like hardcore, you know, it's like it's like um ah, fuck that episode of um Tales from the Crypt that we talk about all the time. Uh the TV one where oh, he goes yeah. to the haunted house and it's like an access show where you know it, it, where they they kind of prey upon these weird stories. Sure. Right? And to get people to watch and all this shit. Yeah, this is a fucked up scene where a fucking bird gets eaten by an alligator and it's like, well, that was real. Yeah, that totally was. (laughs) But my point there was like, this, this tape... She's like kind of freaked out, but not really, because she's like, "Yeah, we're totally gonna go there where they sent this tape, yeah, like from. the Night Stalker or something like that, yeah, or, or some like, shit. or Nightcrawler." Because she, because she wants to get the fucking scoop. Yeah, you know, she wants to do this on her show and talk about it. So, well, she gets more than she bargained for. So they fucking load up the well, truck. She even says, "Don't you want to meet the guy?" And like, I think Ray's like, "I'm good." No, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. That what uh, uh, Kondu's like? Uh, yeah, he probably wants to like smell your underwear and like wear rubber all over his greasy head or something. I, I mean. Hey, that's a thing. So <laughs> sure, he's not totally off the mark there. Sort of. It's Japan. 
I, <laughs> anyway, they just go to the vending machine. I, well, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, so they drive over in their fucking news van. It's already creepy, dude. Like even coming down this road, uh, you know, it's just like this big. They roll up to this big abandoned uh, <sighs> military fuck, base. Yeah, you find out it's a military base. First, you're not sure if it's a factory or it's, what. It's fucking Umbrella Lab, dude. Something's it, going on in there. There's definitely some Hellraiser uh, things happening inside the uh, old Umbrella Lab. Might even be moving into Silent Hill territory by the end here. But yeah, it's uh, it's Umbrella. Uh, it's definitely an experiment. He's a fucking uh, yeah. We'll see. I think the High Evolutionary was fucking working in there at some point. <laughs> honestly, it's pot- he was trying to make it better, man. Yeah, he was he's, to make, yeah. he's making that lambskin guy, <laughs> lamb chop. If you know what I'm talking about. War pig. Yeah. One of them. <laughs> so before they get there, there's just a funny thing I want to mention that they kind of like like focus on a little bit. They kind of do a little like, char- I guess character building is they have these hamburgers. Oh my God, the fucking hamburgers. It's just, you know, the camaraderie of the group yeah. they're trying to show. And like, they almost hit a dog mm-hmm. and they're like, they only oh, dropped the hamburgers. Oh, the hamburger. <laughs> they keep going about these hair. I don't know. It's just kind eat, of a funny aside. Just eat the dirty hamburger off but, the floor. Right. But they're so focused on the hamburgers, yeah. they miss... Weirdo guy standing off by the side. That Albert Wesker standing on against a tree uh, in the right? shadow. Right? Yeah. This guy who's obviously a bad from the get go. Like, there's a scene later where they try to like make the character think, "Oh, I just happen to be here. Don't worry about it." But if you're watching this movie, you're like, "All right, this guy's bad news with the dark shades on and the trench coat." They do this and weird, the cigarette. They do this weird thing where there's like a shadow in broad daylight, and this it's guy's cool. like standing, and it's pretty. It's pretty neat. It doesn't take long for them to meet in him, but no. uh, before they do, they kind of split off into three groups. Uh, we have Mako and, and Rhea go together, and Kondo and Ray go together, and Nami's like, ah, I'm just going to go by myself. Yeah. We spend a lot of time with Ray and Kondo first, because like- Because <laughs> apparently they're actually like seeing each other, Yeah, they're kinda. seeing each other, and she's like, he's like, he's like, come on, I want to fuck, and she's like, no. <laughs> she's like, no, you couldn't even get it up last night, yeah. and she, he's like, oh, I'm sorry, it was the bourbon, and she's like, you're just impudent. <laughs> Like the fuck away from me. So there's there's some really good like spooky oh, set yeah. pieces here, um, but it eventually it, it culminates into Condu like fucking Ray. He's giving her the sequel from last night. <laughs> <laughs> he's making up for it. That's what he's, he comes out of this fucking cupboard like a boggart or something trying to scare her. <laughs> she punches him <laughs> and he falls down and, like breaks his glasses. Uh, meanwhile, while this is all going on, occasionally it's happened once or twice at this point. Mm. We're cutting. This is where I think. There is some Evil Dead influence. Oh. Maybe that's why they're like, fuck, I call it an Evil Dead trap. Yeah. You get this POV. It's a black and white POV shot, just like the evil coming out of the woods yep. with some fucking Tsukamoto stank And on it's it, even dude. got a little roar to it, yeah. kind of like Evil Dead. And it's roar cool. Roar-nosh. So that pops yeah, up. Yeah. It pops up occasionally. And uh, at one point, while they're fucking, it, it stops. and fo- Almost, like, again, like Evil Dead or Night of the Demons, I, I'm a little disappointed we never really do anything with that by the end. I feel like there's an idea there that gets kind of lost in the shuffle. Let's talk about it okay. when we get there, because I'm going to give away the goat if we talk about it sure. now. Sure, okay, fair enough. So while that's all going on, Nami's like kind of just walking around trying to find anything, and she stumbles across like this dead bird. And gets freaked out by that because it's like all, all these bugs are eating it. Oh, it's like these spider crickets or oh, it's something. F- yeah. Fucking gross. Yeah. And then she just kind of hears a sound behind her. I forget what it even is. Like, you know, a foot against gravel or a cigarette being lit. And she turns around and it's our... It's that lighter, dude. <laughs> oh, the, the very hot lighter. The very hot lighter. Which yeah. I wasn't thinking about. But yeah, that thing will be molten. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's got the lighter, and again, we we don't ever, I feel like, get his name. The only name we could find on IMDb that might have been him was Dice K, but I feel like it's maybe said literally once in passing. Uh, if, I, that, I, if that's it, it might be that one time right there, and I missed it too, and because yeah. they never say it again. And, uh, most of the movies, she just says, you, they, or he. My brother, my brother. Yeah. So instantly you think there's something weird with this guy, whether he's behind it or not. You don't know, but the thought's in the back of your head. Well, he's- He's, he's definitely it. not part of the news team is the point. No, he's also there with good intentions, question mark, because he's like, you need to get out of here. Yeah, I, I, sure. Yeah. But then he's also like, I'm looking for somebody. He doesn't tell you yet. You do find out it's his brother eventually. Yeah. But you don't know what that means or whatever. So she's like, okay, well- I'm not going to overthink this, even though we literally broke in here to get here and you're here randomly, but okay. <laughs> Real quick, Ray is a Hitomi Kabayashi. Hitomi Kabayashi. Okay. And she is an, was an adult film star for- <laughs> So uh, she didn't mind this scene. For for Japan Home Video, who funded this movie, but they're like, uh, they had an adult uh, version of the studio called uh, uh, Alice Japan. So I guess that's how they got okay. her to take her clothes off. 
I mean, she's fucking this guy. <laughs> I, I'm assuming there's a sock involved, but they're right on top it of is, each other. I'm borderline seeing like vagina in some of these shots. He's like flipping her over and fucking her six ways to Sunday. <laughs> And like, I mean, I'm, okay, sure. And I'm sure fucking the Angel, guy did shoot that softcore yeah. slash hardcore porn. Exactly. Angel Angel guts guys like yeah. And then he turns her over and then he fucks her and then he fucks her again and then she rides him. And it's like a whole <sighs> thing. It's like this long drawn out. There's a lot of like gross sex in this movie. Yeah, I, it does serve a purpose. It does go on a little too long, but there is a point to it. Uh, and then, like I said, Mako is taking the pictures, and she, Ray, she's Ray like, gets kind of freaked out, and is like, "Well, if you want to take pictures, I'm fucking leaving. Have at it." Yeah, she walks outside, and there's this awesome shot of her walking through the woods. Yeah, and no, no, that felt Evil Dead. Oh too, man. my fucking god, dude! She's like walking through the woods, and the camera's like simultaneously rotating around yes. her and pushing in and out at the same time. And it's they, really they, they cool. Do the thing with the the wind kind of hitting her, and that's, yeah. The last time I really felt like it had any kind of Evil Dead uh, 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 reference, in my opinion. But really personifying the the uh, the dread yes. and the and the anxiety and and how she's scared. Oh yeah, you, you know what I mean. Like through the lens of the camera, it was absolutely. Pretty, I'm just saying. Brilliant. There's also that peppering of oh maybe there's something else to this. I guess oh sure, saying, yeah. and because the wind's like blowing around her weird and whistling and she's, ah! yeah. Well, there might be something Again, weird. I mean, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so then uh, I forget the exact series of events. Before that happens, okay. Rhea like walks off, and right before she gets to this one building, we get introduced to the foot of the killer, and this fucking guy, <laughs> the gimp, comes out of the fucking thing, and he's got like a ping pong ball in his mouth, and he's gagged up, right? And he oh, kicks yeah. him back in his fucking hole. Yeah, we need that first. You're right. Yeah. You have to set that up because it won't make sense. You're later. right. Yeah, we got to get introduced to the fucking Prowler because this guy's dressed like the goddamn Prowler. <laughs> Dude, it's Ben Willis and Rosemary's Killer smashed together. Yeah, uh, I'm okay with it. He I'm, looks great. He, I I think he's scary. He's scary. The yeah. the guy chained up was was again another wrinkle to this film I totally forgot about. Yeah. Uh, but he's fucking disgusting. Yeah, and it's it's so a, per- a lot of implied things going on with whatever's happening to him it's, too. It's periphery, but I'm almost positive that that's. The other person's husband or friend, husband or, or friend or boyfriend or whatever who who the on the tape was killed, right? To get them there, yeah. You're right though that that does happen because then we're we cut to Ray now yeah. got her clothes back on trying to take a shower. She's trying to wash her clothes. Rusty motherfucking abandoned yeah. built like I ain't, ain't gonna happen. No, there's a couple. Well, she doesn't want everyone else to know they fucked. I get it. Yeah, well, there's no there's no getting around that now. But what are you gonna walk around with wet clothes? Yeah, I fell in a puddle or something. What's that white shit on your leg? <laughs> uh, Cumdar's over there. He's bursting out of the ground. The stuff. I don't, don't know what to think. It. <laughs> but yeah, no, I guess you're right. Yeah, she's trying to wash her clothes, and then you know that was that was her mistake because Kano's like, you know, I fucked you, and I'm just bailing on you. I guess. Well, sure. And then like. I like this scene because yeah. it's a, it's pretty tense because like no, a, a maggot falls in her hair because Bones is oh, having disgusting. Bones is having a fucking party upstairs, man. Maggot on the pizza, maggot on Ray. <laughs> in multiple locations, yeah. of course. She walks into a snake. That's creepy. And I thought that was pretty. That was well done too because she's standing there like super still for like this. I don't know what it is. I guess it's a poisonous snake. Yeah. That was actually before Kondo scares her. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to put that in there because that's a pretty tense scene and she's like crying. It's, it's, oh, it's yeah. really good. It's a, it, it's an additional thing that the movie didn't need to do. They get him like, oh, this, the guy scares her. It's like, no, what about a snake? They're in this abandoned building. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, it's intense. Well, right. But it also could happen too. This part, not could so not, No, This in could not happen years. in a million years. I mean, the first part, sure, but the rest, no. Oh, it is so fucking good, man. <laughs> this is the one part of the movie I remembered. It was burned into my brain. The rest, it, it came back to me as I was watching. When, when, when you say Evil Dead Trap, this is the scene I think of. Yes, I mean, granted, it's not the one on the cover, no. which is also very memorable, but yeah, it's the one you think of because she opens this cupboard that's like rattling. You know, she thinks it's condo again. Yeah, fucking with her. It's the dead woman from the tape. Scares she, the sh- fucking shit out of her. She falls right out into the front, and you're like, and it's a jump scare. And before you even get to recover from Dude, the it's jump less scare, than a second. it's like this fucking pike comes out of the ground and stabs her through the stomach. It is so fucking cool, man. And like, they just keep coming. One comes out of the wall yep. and gets her in the arm, and then the other, other one, one comes in, hits her in the chest. It is, it's awesome. It's brutal. It's so good. And then they just cut away. Yep. She's dead. 
oh, something that I really love that this film does that I feel like a lot of films don't do anymore is like after all the carnage, because mm. usually it's like quick, 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 cut to the next thing. It's quick, 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 and then it stops, and then it pulls out to let you take in everything that just happened, and then it cuts. Yeah. It's, I love it. it. I mean, you're right. And and now nobody knows she's dead, and it makes sense. It doesn't feel like it's shoehorned in or no. forced because Kondo went back to the van. They're all going back to the van because that was the original plan. They're going to go back there after an hour. It's also a giant complex. Yeah. And they're just like, I don't know. I guess Ray's off doing something. We'll just leave her a note. Yeah. Because Mako found something, and she's yeah. like, come with me. So they go to this like gymnasium or, or theater or something. It's like the school. It's like the entrance part. Well, yeah, I guess the, that, that's specifically what... She yeah. wants to show them, but they do go inside. Yeah, and and there's this is the first of some really cool shots with like the flash of the camera because they use the flash of the camera to like light up this room, and in the room are all of these uh, televisions, and all the windows are boarded up. Yes, which comes back later. So they find this room, and and they're flashing the camera off, and they go inside, and uh, they see somebody like run behind the TVs, and it freaks them the fuck out. So they run out of the room, and they're going deeper into the into the building. And they see somebody at the end of the hall. And they're like, who is that? And you just hear, chuk, 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 chuk. and somebody's like floating across oh, yeah. the, 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 the floor. And it's you're like, a squeaky wheel. You're and you're hearing. like, what the fuck is that? Ray is has this huge hook through her on a chain. And she's like coming at them doing like 90 <laughs> miles an hour. Yeah. And like knocks everybody down and fucking smacks against this cement wall. Yeah. Uh, you know, secret's out now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> people are dead. People, people are, are dying. People are dying. Uh, but, but what's crazy is like stuff starts caving in. Oh, yeah. Like uh, Rhea tries to like run out and like shit starts falling down and this whole uh, walkway gets like uh, a bunch of rubble. Yeah, you know, like almost down. like a, uh, an explosion that just drops fucking cement everywhere. They get separated and Rhea like runs out a fucking side door. <laughs> She's like, I gotta get help. I gotta get the cops. Yeah. And then it's it's uh, Mako, Nami, and... Uh, uh, Kondo, Kondo, yeah. Kondo, and they like go up to this like door that's like this jail cell door. Oh, again, it really felt like Resident Evil by this Man, point, just because like, it's a military base, and I know like a lot of those games like yeah. have that in like the the tail end of them, and I'm like, ah, I can't help but think of it. But especially this shot. So it's, I mean, granted, they came way later, so it technically they maybe it stole from this, but it's like hard not, you know, the timeline of my, the MDU, if you will, in my brain. Not, it's not way later. There's a movie that comes out a year after this, which we will be talking about later this year when we'll just put a pin okay, in it. Okay, okay. So she's standing in front of this, you know, uh, cell, and it's pitch dark, mm. and Mako, like, leans over to, like, look through the gates to see if she can see anything, and this fucking knife comes out and, like, cuts her cheek and pulls back, and she's just like, what? And she sits up, and you're like, wait a second, did she just get cut in the face? Uh, yeah. And she's got this slice on her <laughs> face, and she's like, oh, shit. They turn around, and then fucking uh, the Prowler's there. Yeah, well, right. Behind yeah. the gate, and, and then they all take off running. They book it, and, yeah. you know, it's dark as hell in here. I mean, so so they kind of turn a corner. They see where there's a stairwell, and, and Nami and Kondu, they, they, they kind of just go for it, and they don't realize that the stairwell's been removed. Oh, they go right down the fucking <laughs> chute, man. Yeah, like like far enough that we don't know where the fuck they are. And then, uh, you know, Maiko's by herself and is like, oh, shit. She notices the hole. Yeah. So she's like, she's screaming down to them, but she has to run because the killer's after well, her. Well, she keeps hearing the clicking in the behind her and the flash behind her. Because she dropped her fucking camera. It's, it's probably the most intense part of the whole movie, I would say. Because she's screaming for them and you hear, ching, ching, ching. And you look in the in the hallway and the flashes are going off. But you and don't it, know how far dark. away they are. No. That's, that's the scary part. But then there's this awesome scene where it's it's all dark. And the killer's coming after, and the flat, and he's hitting the flash. And as the flash is going up, it's very much like that scene in Alligator. Oh yeah, where that dude gets eaten in the in yeah the, when he's taking the pictures. True, it's really I love that shit. Mm -hmm. But she ends up getting away and slams this door shut and puts like this big thing in front of it. <laughs> that did nothing. And we're gonna go outside and join uh, Rhea, but uh, let's take a little break first. Find out why that didn't work shortly. And now these messages. Hey, Sean, what you got there? Oh, Cavity Colors, the new Killer Clowns collection. Obviously, Joe. 35th anniversary. Oh, wow. Yeah, you just head to cavitycolors.com slash moviedumpsterpodcast and use code moviedumpsterpodcast to get yourself 10% off. That sounds great, but I think I'll just take yours. Hello? Hello? 
Hey, so earlier in the episode, uh, we talked about uh, doing something a little new. So uh, we finally got our own movie dumpster hotline number. <laughs> the so MD hotline. The MD hotline, baby. Um, Long time sh- coming. Yes. Um, so we can take. We're, we're going to be taking a voicemail, and we're going to be taking an email or snail mail or both uh, for this middle segment of the yes. show. And uh, I guess let, let's yeah. do it. Here we go. The first one. The first one. Joe, my man, big time appreciation. I just received my hot sauces. Could not be happier. I can't wait to dig in and try them all later on. Huge fan of you guys, as you know. All the support in the world. Keep doing what you guys do. I love it all. Tremendous. MDU forever. MDU forever indeed. MDU forever indeed. Uh, That was from Adam Q. Uh... I'm glad you enjoyed the hot sauces. Those were uh, those. Yeah, were... explain these hot sauces. Okay, a little. I've, okay. I've imbibed in them before. Every, everybody's been hitting us up. First, I just want to say thank you, Adam, because that was really sweet. And uh, thanks for watching the show. Thanks for supporting the show. Um, yeah. So the hot sauces. Uh, that's just something me and my wife do every year. We gr- we have a garden. We grow a bunch of shit. It's way too much for the two of us. So we um, we make hot sauces and we sell theme sauces. Theme though. sauces. Yeah. We did we did uh, Herbert West reagent. Which is jalapeno. Okay. We did Cropsy's campfire sauce, which is like fire roasted uh, st- uh, peppers and stuff. Um, there's a Death Kappa one, which is really fucking hot. Which I remember that out. one. Yeah. Um, and there's a Freddy barbecue sauce, and there's Death Walks on High Heels. But I think most of them are sold out by the, especially by the time this airs, everything's <sighs> gone. So it was like a special little thing we do. It's not like on the MD store or anything sure. like that. Yeah. Uh, and you've been doing this like on the deal, like you know, to friends and family for a few years now. This is the first time you kind of open it up to other people. Yeah. So how? Just, just out of morbid curiosity, how did that feel? Just, you know, I'm, I'm curious. Well, we wanted to share it with, we wanted to go beyond, you know what I mean? Uh, right, yeah. Uh, the, the spectrum. Want to go the, unbound, the, obviously. Uh, uh, yes, you go full Frankenstein unbound, you never go back, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was cool. We opened it up and we had some people uh, like like Adam uh, chimed in, some fans uh, chimed in and, and got some sauces. I know um, I know Pat Farmer has some sauces, okay. um, which he may or may not be doing a video <laughs> On the hot sauces itself, oh. like trying them. Okay, so on stay, Kings of Horror, I'm assuming. On Kings of Horror, okay. so stay tuned or go subscribe to Kings of Horror. By the way, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, we also have a uh, uh, some snail mail. Yes, or an email snail mail. Uh, do you want to open this one? <laughs> it was an e- It was a digital mail that got printed into a snail. Yeah, mail. and then they sent it to us. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to do this one? Sure. Okay, here you go. Open it up. Who's it from? Uh, two movie dumps are from Steven. Steven. Steven really sealed this son of a bitch. He sure did. Thanks, Steven. <laughs> also, this is how I open letters. So you're getting the full effect here. Wow, you don't open it? Okay. No, I don't. Oh, this is fun. This is fun watching. Okay. What do we got cooking? Steven sent us an email. Snail mail. He sent us this. He says, hello. Hello, Steven. Uh, he says, uh, I am writing to tell you I am enjoying your channel's look at Tales from the Dark Side. Uh, well, thank you very much. We'll let Chris know. Yeah, well, if Chris is watching this, that's true. Thank you Wave very much. to him. Hi, right, Chris. Hi, right, Chris. You two, you two uh, Adam and... Uh, <laughs> fuck, I forgot his name. <laughs> Steven. Steven. Uh, so Steven continues. He says, I recently found this channel on Comet TV and wanted to find a channel that was reviewing the episodes. Yours is the best so far. Wow, thank you. Uh, I really like what you're doing. And they said, I just want to, to share a few questions slash observations, if that's okay and if you have the time. Of course. Yes. That's, we're making time, baby. We are. Uh, first, when you showed the answering machine, the pause was for effect because it's right here. Oh, okay. Well, this is a different one. <laughs> oh, God, God damn it. This is the MD hotline one. Okay, I'm the sorry. The other one, that's in my office. All right. With Harry, with Harry uh, Anderson. Right. Well, right. Okay. It's the, so it's the exec you sect. Right. That makes more sense as I continue the question. Yeah. First, when you showed the answering machine from All a Clone, uh, what was it? All a Clone. All a Clone by the Telephone. Telephone yeah. episode. What was the actual one used on the show? Or, or was it the actual one on the show? Or did you just mean that it's the exact model okay. that you were able to purchase? And okay. they want to also add a more curiosity. How much did it cost? Okay. What a great find. So, yes, uh, that is the model that was used. It's not the prop from the show, but it's the Execu- ExecuSect TDC30. 
uh, or TCD30. One How of them. you know that? I have no clue. Because I searched endlessly for it for months and then finally fucking found one. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, that would do it. I think it was, uh, I don't know, I think I paid like 100 bucks for it. That's not bad. It's not bad, but it's also kind of absurd for a fucking answering machine. <laughs> they knew, like, this guy really wants They're this like, fucking thing. I know that some Tales from the Dark Side nut's gonna want this fucking thing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so that's where I got it. This is not that answering machine this is a different one we got we actually use this one for uh the uh the dumpster goblin this is actually we, this is on oh, loan trash yeah this is on loan from dumpster goblin <laughs> yeah he sent it to you, you got a la paz postcard yeah. in the process well with it. They, they he stole it from us is what it is so we took it back okay daniel yeah. baldwin somewhere in the mix there you know he is all right steven has a little bit more here okay what does he got they also say i was also wondering if you knew that there was a book of short stories from the series called tales from the dark side volume one yes uh we have it oh you do it's right here. Oh, I think you've actually had that on set a couple times. Yeah. yeah. So the plan for this, real quick, is for Patreon. We have not done it yet, but I we want to read um, some of the some of the stories out of this to coincide with the episodes that we've done. So look for that soon-ish question mark. He, uh, they they go on to say they own the book also. Oh, good for them. Uh, they purchased it around the time the series first aired. So that's kind of cool. Shit, that's awesome. Uh, it, the first one's syndication in Salem, Massachusetts, at a bookstore. That's awesome. Uh, and they also actually, uh, you know, pose kind of an idea or a question to us. And they say, I would assume it would be possible to interview some of the people behind the show. Uh, would you ever consider doing that? And uh, they just, before you want to answer that, I, I would say, sure. That's uh, something that yeah. is on the table. Yeah. Uh, something we'll look into for sure. Yes. Uh, they, they then say, I think you guys are good at what you do and would be able to ask some interesting questions, extract fascinating conversations from some of the principals. Thank you. That's, that's even bigger of a compliment. Yeah. I, I was going to go more into that, but I guess we kind of answered that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just going to finish this up here. He's got a few more little comments here. He goes, I, I know you, I will have to view more of your episodes to see what you think, but I just wanted to say for me, the original pilot trick or treat is their absolute favorite. It's a good one. Uh, I mean, we're going down the line. That is the literal first one. That's an audio one. So check that out. And uh, there's a little bit more here. They say uh, your reviews bring back a lot of memories, which we, we talk about that often. I mean, I mean, that's great. That's the whole point of the show, yeah. really. Uh, as as does the Comet TV re-airings. For some reason, I have not purchased the DVD of the series. I mean, we don't get paid for you to buy it, but we recommend it. Yes. It's a lot easier to watch along, and it's at your leisure. Yes. Uh, but they do own the other one that came out for after Dark Side. Uh, they have Monsters when oh. the show was first airing. Uh, they say they called Laurel and received a submission guidelines package because I wrote a teleplay called Call Waiting. Holy shit. That's amazing. Are so you, yeah. So no, no, like he like wrote a teleplay, a teleplay, and like was going to submit it to Laurel yeah. for Monsters. The TV That's show. That's what it sounds That's like. That's incredible. Uh, they wanted to submit it for con consideration. Uh, it had a copy of the first page of the teleplay for the Feverman. That's the first episode of Monsters. Oh, I think I saw that one actually. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, when I borrowed your DVD set and watched yeah. one fucking episode, <laughs> which was the first episode. gave it back six yeah, months yeah. later. <laughs> Uh, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you something. I wish there could, there would be consideration of perhaps reviving the series, but not mm. in a modern way. I think he's talking about, I mean, guess he's talking about monsters specifically, but Tails also, I'm I, sure, falls in there. Yeah. And as the CW wanted to do with Joe Hill. Oh, I didn't know that. That would be, that would be awesome. I mean, we, we talk about, uh, doing our own version of Tails and monsters mm. all the time. And I think that would be super fun to do. Uh, Joe Hill is an interesting choice. I, I didn't know that that was a, on the table at one point. Well, I think Joe Hill continued the Tales from the Dark Side in the comics. And then I guess he was behind. I think oh, we might have talked we about We probably it talked about that on like the Creep Show episode or one of the one Tales of those, episodes. Either the first episode of Talks or, um, the Creep Show episode. Yeah. Uh, they also then say that instead, uh, do it in the exact same original manner as the original micro budget on film stock, same pacing style, etc. Might be an interesting experiment, and I'm sure it would be monetized in some fashion. That would be incredible. And Steven kind of closes it out here saying, anyway, take care. Hope this letter reaches you. And they don't have a YouTube account. Hence, they wrote the email. Well, you're not going to see it on YouTube, and we'll be <laughs> emailing you uh, after the fact. Yes, yes. But uh, we really appreciate it, Steven, and we're glad you're enjoying the show. And you're having a good time. And and people that do have the YouTube account now, here's here's an outlet. Uh, here's you, an you outlet. might you might be commenting now, but send us an email, shoot us a voicemail to the number that will be appearing on screen uh, as I'm saying this, and uh, Joe's gonna probably say it as I'm pantomiming towards you. You are absolutely right. It's the that number, that MDU hotline number where you can leave a voicemail is seven four zero six eight eight dump. Oh wait a second, people don't have don't people don't have letters on their numbers ah, well, anymore. You know. <laughs> 
<laughs> look at look at the graphic on screen. Check the description. Yeah, and if you listen on your audio podcast, it's 740-688-3867. Yes. So give us a call. Uh, or shoot us an email or mail us on the P.O. Box again. That one we actually don't have immediate access. It's on screen. It's in the description. It's a P.O. Box. Movie Dumpster, P.O. Box 918, Bangor, PA, 18013. Well, that's why we have Joe here. Yes. And with that said, on with the show. So, yeah, we're, welcome back. Here we are. We left Mako by herself yes. outside of this locked door. Now, this fucking scene is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I love it because it's one shot. Yeah. And, and Mako's, like, barricaded this door, and the camera's going from the door handle down to Mako oh, down yeah. the hallway. Back to Mako, back to the door handle. Back to this, back to this, back to this, back to this. And then it finally, like, after you're stressed out because you're like, okay, when the fuck is, what's going to happen? <laughs> then the fucking door handle pulls down and the fucking door explodes yeah, out. Yeah, that was... She tried and it did nothing. It this was, guy is like a fucking Hulk or something. Yeah, I don't know. But, like, she wasn't expecting that. And, no. like, you know, the audience isn't either. It's awesome. Well, and the, and the way he gets her, he doesn't actually kill her here, uh, but he knocks her out because... She, She's like screaming and he pulls the knife out and oh. uh, she grabs it for whatever reason. It's not totally clear. But the point is he pulls the knife out of her cl enclosed hand, leaves this huge cut mark on it. And just, I guess, between the pain and the sight of it, just everything happening, she fucking just screams and faints. Because through the whole thing, the camera's going yeah, off. Yeah, well, that too, yeah. And she, I guess she grabbed something and it like zooms in yes. on her hand with the knife and then he just pulls it out. It's it's a fucking great scene. The and way that it's put together and everything. You're 100% right. And then, yeah, we, we do go outside now to Rhea, who's made it to the van. It's <laughs> starting to she... get kind of dark out. It's it's, it's dusk. As Poor Rhea. She opens the fucking gate. She's got the keys to the van. She starts that shit up. I would have blown go. that fucking gate off its hinges with that oh, man. I am kept sorry. Yeah. Someone was murdered yeah. uh, in a very theatrical way. I'm just getting the fuck out. I mean, I guess she didn't know what was about to happen because well, as soon as she gets back in the van, little gag ball boy. Oh, the gimp comes back yeah. full, full fucking circle, man. Uh, I don't know if he was hanging out back there or he snuck in while she opened the gate. But regardless, he, he uh, pulled a leather face. Or a Chucky. Uh, maybe Leatherface Texas Chainsaw 3D or whatever the fuck it was called. Because all of a sudden now this character, even though I, I guess it makes even less sense with Leatherface, decides, well, I, I'm being uh, told to kill you so I can gain my freedom, but uh, yeah, I'm going to rape you now. Oh, yeah. Well, he goes, well, the thing about that is like he goes, he, first he's like, oh, I've been told to kill you, you can't leave because you know too much. And he goes to choke her and then it cuts. When we cut back, he's fucking... Rhea. Well, he does specifically say before that, and I like I guess to do he, it slow. Well, he goes, slower. "I want to enjoy this or something slower. to that effect." Slower. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. Yeah, he's a real scumbag. Uh, and yeah, you're right. I guess let's just talk about that because there is a little back and forth here, but I feel like it's just better to get this scene done and over with. Yeah, there's a. This is where again, where that angel guts shit comes in, or that mm. pinky violence shit comes in, because now we have like this extended rape scene where he's like plot dumping. Yeah, that kind of is happening. You're right. Yeah, because he, he's like, because he's fuck, well, she, he's fucking her, and he's like, and he's like, ah. Uh, yeah, there's two of them, but there's one of them, but there's two of them. Yeah. I don't know. Well, because Rhea, to her credit, killers. in this horrible, horrible situation, is at least like trying to like think about, okay, well, I, yeah, I, this is happening to me, yeah. but can I get some information? Can I just do something to make this not just a total like horrible experience? And so, yeah, you're right. She does get that information out mm -hmm. of him, but it doesn't fucking matter because as soon as she kind of gets away from him, he, he, you know, she opens the door to get away. He just overpowers her anyway. He overpowers her, but then this rogue fucking uh, bow gun bolt yeah. comes right through the fucking window and, like, out of his mouth. It, 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 talk about the, the, <laughs> the camera work in this again, just briefly. Oh, oh, oh. It's this shot from, like, the back of the, the, the van, and it's yeah. this long, you know, minute or two scene of her fighting him off and him, yeah. you know, blowing his load up her ass or something. <laughs> he and does. you could just see in the background, if you're really paying attention, the gate close. Oh, yeah, that's creepy. And then because he, there's nobody there. Yeah, so you just are like, uh-oh, and then you're right. Then he gets it in the back of the head with the fucking crossbow. Yeah, and, and it goes through his mouth, and he's, like, bleeding into all over her, her mouth. Room. It's gross. She's yeah. able to climb out. But <laughs> this, this woman. again, like, this fucking kill is, like, it's, it's amazing. It's really well done. This fucking wire garrote 
noose comes out of the sky and like he like flings uh, it over like a fishing yeah ladder like wraps something? around her neck and the way that it's shot she's like being pulled up on the side of the van and she's like kicking and stuff yeah. she's pulled over the top yeah fucking underwear's getting ripped off in the process and then when she comes off the other side of the van she just lands on her neck and it just breaks in half Feel really bad for the character. I I, I don't want to like talk about this too long, but I know in the past this is something that may have killed a movie for me. It doesn't for this one. I don't know if maybe I've turned a corner or it just was like, well, that was the point. It's meant to be uncomfortable. Yeah. And it's meant to be gross and it's meant to shock you and it's meant to scare you. It, it definitely is overkill. Could have maybe chopped 30 seconds off of that, but I understand that's the point. It did and its it job. Is, it did. It's not Draniac. It made, where I feel like it made I just your skin to, crawl. <laughs> yeah, I, I made my skin crawl, but not unlike Draniac, I didn't need to then go take a shower after. I was just like, "Whoa, that was brutal. <laughs> Let's move on." But there's also this. There's a way I, to I do it. I, don't I guess say, if you, if every movie just excised it, I'd be okay with that too. But I, here's a way where it's like, "All right, it worked." I feel like scumbags need to That's be what I'm scumbags, That's what I'm and saying. there needs to be a means to an end. And sometimes mean shit just happens. Yeah, you know what I mean. But. He, I mean, he gets Rhea, Rhea's on a whole nother level because all that happens and then she gets noosed and fucking yeah, neck broken. Yeah, it's yeah. a whole thing. It's um, a horror movie at the a, end of yeah. the day. And again, like we said, this guy directed stuff like this. It fits. So there's this weird scene from there where Nami like wakes up on a roof. There's like water next to her, but then she's on a oh, roof. Yeah. This is a scene that does a lot of uh, storytelling with off-screen elements because she's on the roof, yeah. which just as an aside, because this is weird shit I think about, is her fucking jacket being this huge puddle and she just decides, eh, well, it was expensive, I'm taking it. Yeah. And uh, But you're right, she's on this roof and she's like walking around. She's like, what the hell? Why am I up here? And she bumps into sunglasses, sunglasses boy. Yeah. And he's like, uh, again, another observation that just I am focused on because I'm insane. Okay. He's wearing flip flops and he's walking through every motherfucking puddle. I'm like, those things have to be soaked. But anyway, this line delivery, this exposition right here is amazing. Yeah. He's like, hey, uh, how many died before you? And she's like, what do you mean? He's like, well, how about when did he die? And it, it, the camera pans over and it's fucking Kondu's head just like on the ground and she freaks out. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, though. It's smart. It's so good. Uh, and he's like, hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it lights up a cigarette with that lighter. Yeah, and it's like I'm looking. This is where we get the look, brother dump. A yeah, little bit. I'm looking for. I'm looking for my brother. He does fuck up here. I mean, they do walk around a bit, so I may have the timeline slightly messed up in my head here because they walk around the complex. But he's like, he's talking about it at one point, and like on a rewatch, I notice it, but on the first viewing, I don't really pick up on it because I don't know. And I guess it would be anybody else watching it for the first time. But he's explaining this to her at one point. And he and he's like, yeah, my brother. And then like something happens, off screen or something. They hear a noise, and he goes, yeah, Hideki. Yeah, you gotta stop doing that. Yeah. But she takes that as he's saying Hideki. His name's my brother's Hideki. Yeah, 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 right. It'll make sense shortly. But he he sees Hideki supposedly or whoever this is. He's claiming it's his brother Hideki. There, it's almost like he's you don't know yet, but he yeah, it's kind of like a ghost. Like, is he a ghost? Is he again, there to like protect her or something right. because of the way of his the way he shows up, mm -hmm. the way he talks, and the things he alludes to, and especially the thing with the lighter, right? That we'll get to in a second. And, well, and, and some yeah. of those supernatural elements, like we yeah. were talking about, like we have the Evil Dead esque kind of things. Yeah, but it hasn't. They haven't like gone together right. yet entirely. So in this scene, he 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 sees the brother. Nami and the and the audience don't see it, but you're led to believe that he's been stabbed by him. Yeah, he got it. He has an arrow in the arm. Yes, and he pulls out this fucking revolver and he's just firing off at him. He's like, "You son of a bitch!" And he's just shooting into the darkness. And yeah. she's like, "Who are you shooting at?" Like you can't even see him exactly. Um, and again, the camera work, man, and the editing just really just sell this whole concept. And he just runs off. Yeah. And then Nami's walking around by herself and finds this fucking TV in the middle of the floor. Yeah. And it's it's a close-up shot of Mako, and she has- okay. Makeup on. Makeup on, and you're like, what the fuck? It's like corpse makeup And she's bit. just like, help, help me, help me, and she's running around, it shuts off, and she ends up running around the complex. Well, she ends up back in that room with all the TVs and, and yeah. the, the, the wooded-off yeah, 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 yeah. windows. That's a really cool scene. It's awesome, and then you see her like all over the screens, and then- uh, And then the music be you know, beat goes up, and you're like, yeah. oh! <laughs> Yeah. That's the way theirs goes. Ours goes. 
exactly. So then she finally finds out where Mako is. But as, again, I don't, I don't want to keep mentioning the, the editing, but I, I feel like I have to because it's yeah. just so good. We get to see what Mako actually, almost like kind of like Saw did this a lot, actually. Uh, again, uh, see, we get some John Kramer shit yeah. going on right now. Uh, but even just in the editing, yeah. because they show the audience what is actually happening before the character knows, and that's your tension. <sighs> and it's so good, man. Because she's fucking she, like strung up on this thing with this like... This this pulley that's attached to the trigger of a crossbow that's attached, and the wire goes to the doorknob. This scene has to be at least thirty seconds. Oh yeah, she grabs this door handle and then it holds on the door handle, and you see like this fucking Kevin McAllister ass fucking wire hooked yeah. up, and the camera pans all the, the way around the whole fucking room, and you're just like, oh my god, what is this? Like again, the tension's through the. You're on the edge of your fucking seat, like what Literal is this hooked tension. up to? And then it stops. And it's on the trigger of the fucking crossbow. And then we pull out and Mako is like chained to the wall with a fucking ball gag in her mouth. And then so, you know, she opens the door. Yeah. You're like, oh, fuck. (laughs) You go, oh, fuck, this thing fires. And And the camera follows it. too. Yeah, it follows it. And like Mako dodges it and it hits the wall. Well, you know why? Because when it fired, it went, (laughs) McClunky. McClunky. So... (laughs) McClunky. The banger of this scene, you're like, oh my God, thank God. Mako didn't get shot in the head. <laughs> she walks, Nami walks over and trips some other fucking switch and the literal trip wire. Giant machete comes down and fucking smashes into the side of Mako's fucking head and splits it in half. Like a log being chopped. It's amazing. <laughs> and like, there's that moment where the brain's like still kind of active. And she's like, 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 she's like, oh my God, Mako, Mako. So the killer shows up, so Prowler shows up, and then, like, fireworks start, like, shooting off, like, these well, fucking... Like firing them, I thought. Like, Roman candles are firing. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that a little bit later, but... But I think in this instance, I I thought he was actually using fireworks. I don't think so. I, mean, I guess now that you mention it, maybe no, you're right. just, like, these weird things going, yeah. these balls of fire or sparks flying at her, so she this runs is, out This is a hard one not to just spoil flat out. I know this is movie dumpster, but... So she's, like, defeated, and the bolts come flying at her again, yeah. and it, like, pins her to a fucking wall. And kind of Looney Tunesy. She, it's cool. She rips herself off the wall, and then she's like, "Fuck you! I'm not scared of you, or whatever." And then this fucking rogue bolt comes and lands right in her yeah, leg. Right in the leg. <laughs> but that's that the glasses guy conveniently shows up and is like, "Oh yeah, I was taking a leak or something. Uh, do you need help?" And he comes with his gun and he takes and he takes a shot in the dark, and you're like, and he's like, "Ah." Oh. And you're like, is it sunglasses? Is it not sunglasses? At this point, I'm like, does that gun actually have any fucking ammo? Is that all blanks at this point? You're really just haphazardly shooting this thing. He goes over and he helps Nami, pulls the thing out of her leg. He knows where the secret entrance is, apparently. This is where- Or exit, I guess. Well, this is where they do the lighter thing. Yeah. And he's like, here, hold this for a second. And she grabs it, and it's so fucking hot, she drops it. Anybody that's held a lighter for a long period of time, uh, mostly smokers, let's say, yeah. uh, of, a, of a particular, you know, marijuana. Yeah. Uh, well, I used to smoke cigarettes. But I'm saying, like, you're not just sitting there holding it. The, like, even a Zippo, you're not just sitting there with a the lit the entire time. Well, you, you know, yeah. you're lighting your thing and you're putting sure. it away so sure. it cools off. Yeah. You know, my point is, you're, you're holding it a little longer on some of those uh, uh, medicinal items, let's yeah, say. Well, yes, so I understand. My point is, if you've, if you've fucked with a lighter where you're doing that a lot, it gets hot after a few minutes. Sure does. He's holding it for like 15, 20 minutes. I mean, it's an implied 15, 20. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, like when you sit there and think about it, it's like, holy shit, does this guy just not feel pain? Is he a ghost? What the hell's happening? Well, that's the thing. Is he a ghost or whatever? Instantly. Yeah, no, I mean, he's burning up all that fucking Zippo fluid too. What's the fucking burn <laughs> thing on there? Yeah, right. An hour? Uh, yeah, was he got them all in his pocket? He's yeah. got like, well. <laughs> he's just filling up. I think I know where he's got them, but again, we're, we're trying, we're almost there. We're, we're, we're almost there where it's he's a- got the Zippo stuff and everything else is, is located. It's a ghost flame. Yeah. So, like you said, they're walking through the uh, umbrella tunnels, and he basically yeah, they passed Project Metal Beast. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, he's there. He's fucking up. Uh, what's his face? I, I, Barry Boswick yeah, exactly. in the corner. He's giving him the old fucking claw, picking him up, chokes him. <laughs> um, but you're right. Yeah, they're walking down with the with the light, and they're they're plot dumping again. Yeah, and it's like he's going he keeps going on about his brother, and like you need to get out of here, and like they're all dead. There's nothing you could do. Blah blah blah. Well, he slips up here too because he has like kind of a moment where like. He has some kind of thing. You think it's like a heart problem. Again, it makes more sense in a minute. Yeah. But he's like, oh, I need to sit down for a minute. Yeah. And she's like, uh, are you okay? And that's where, you know, he mentions the thing about the brother for like the fifth time. Yeah. But she's like, oh, yeah, Hideki, right? And he's like, how did you know that? He's like, you told me. And he's like, oh, yeah. 
Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> can I have the lighter? Just go that way, because now that I know that you know that, you need to just get the fuck just, out just of here, please. Get the fuck out of here. She's like, uh, are you, I can go with you. I'm not scared. He's like, nah, 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 I got it. There's a weird part, too, here, because he's like, um, she's, or she says, excuse me, yeah. she's like, she's like, I don't even know why anybody would want mm. to kill me or want to, like, yeah. meet me. Like, I'm not even famous. Well, it's or whatever. a late show, but yeah, it's like whatever. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, I don't know. Maybe they just want to have. Maybe they want to see you naked. And she's like, Well, they could just come down to the news station and meet me. He's like, Well, they can't go down to the news station to see you naked, can they? Which, which was a kind of an awkward exchange, and you even see in her face, like, okay, whatever like you that. Say. What a weird thing to just randomly <laughs> say to someone you just met. Anyway, he gives her the gun and gives her the lighter, or she gives him back the lighter, and she gets out. She's out of the. She's out of the. She's out of the woods. She's out of the woods because she fucking runs out oh, yeah. and, and gets to the car, which is it's now like daytime or you know very early morning. It's very early morning. She gets to the car and there's the bodies of. Uh, she finds Rhea yeah, yeah. and the fucking gimp is in the fucking car dead. And she goes to she goes to start the car, and she finds out like it's all gross inside. Yeah. So she ducks down behind the thing because she sees the killer coming. Dude walks up and just takes the two bodies. Yeah. And you're drags like, them okay. off. Hmm. She takes a little sip of fucking uh, the last con- little bit of- fucking Pepsi or whatever uh, he's got in there from his hamburger. Yeah. And then she has this moment where she could leave, but she doesn't. She she like puts her hair up in a in a ponytail, cocks the gun, grabs a flashlight, gets a little I don't know what snack, and then heads back in because she's gonna take revenge uh about her friends which, being killed. Which, listen, I'm I'm there for that, but uh you know, I'm not the biggest uh defender of the boys in blue, but uh, maybe get some fucking backup. I don't know. I, I, fuck that, dude. Like everybody's dead. Just get out of there. I, I I get that too. That that's also an option. I'd at least get a little help. I mean, it ends up working out okay for her. Uh, but uh, I, I get me a shotgun, <laughs> get me an Uzi, get me something else besides this little baby revolver that I don't even know for a fact actually shoots real rounds <laughs> or even is loaded. Because how many times did he shoot that fucking I, more gun? than six times? Yeah. Six times. So she goes back in and she goes down the tunnel, and there's this weird like glowing light. Mm. And she, a lot of good Dutch angles. It, it's scene, fucking too. great because she goes up and she goes up into this room. And again, just to bring the uh, Tetsuo back like full circle. Yeah. There's like these electrical wires and conduit that look like veins coming down yeah. on, on these like um, pillars. Yeah, that was that was almost like yeah, Tetsuo is a good example. Like Blade Runner ass. Yeah, it's fucking cool, man. And she ends up going into Richard Brake's room full of VHS tapes. <laughs> oh, he's he, got that disgusting baby bottle. <laughs> he's got the baby bottle. He's in the VHS room. She doesn't know who it is yet, but she finds this room full of TVs and shit. And the voice you hear in the beginning of the movie about, oh, uh, mother, uh, wake up, Hideki. It's time for yeah. school. You don't want to be late. Uh, it's a recording right. that goes off at like six in the morning. So there's like time intervals when this fucking recording goes off. Also, because my I already blew the load in my shorts. You can't see it on camera, oh. but because uh, we, we skipped it, the reveal is here. Uh, the glasses guy's the fucking killer. Because we're getting there. They show it right before this asshole. I know they fucking do, but I'm trying to tell a story. What, what, I'm going in the order of the film. <laughs> I'm trying to because before she gets to this murder hole or whatever the fuck you want to call it, I they show this guy with his fucking 45 empty Miller lights and his fucking wild turkey putting war paint. I, on. I know, I know, but I wanted it to reveal to the people watching the fucking show. I revealed it as the film did, <laughs> as it was intended. What I was going to say is that she's putting it all together because she's looking at the mirror and there's yeah, like a picture of the woman and like a kid, and the kid with and the pins in it, and between that. The pictures of the, the the video of her on the screens and then the the um the recording going off. She puts it all together that he is obsessed with her because she, whoever the killer is looks thinks he she looks like her their mother. Right, which is the which in the beginning they literally say that you just might have forgot about it. But by there's now. but there's no brother in those pictures. It's just one kid. Right. So she so she hears the killer coming, opens the door. It's sunglasses guy. She knows who it is now. But he's in the prowler getup. But he's in the prowler getup, and you hear. Right, she knows the, the voice, child yeah. voice talking to him. Yeah, so it's him talking to somebody else, and the child voice is like, "Oh, you know, uh, I want to kill more people or something." And and uh, dude is like, "Oh, we already killed four people today. That's enough. We're good. <laughs> we better quote him. We better quote." And he, and he's like, he's like, he's like, "Oh, you let that reporter go?" And he's like, "Yeah, I let the reporter go." She's like, "No, she did it. She's standing right there in the room." Yeah, there's also some like stuff where like he's like being thrown around by like. 
a ghostly being presence pushed or something? around and like stuff? a mime yeah. or something. Yeah, you don't yeah. really know. Yeah, and you're like, is it a ghost? But you're right. Then he comes in the room and he sits down and he does pull the mask he off. He is so fucking cool about it. He's like, oh, you figured it out, huh? Okay. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to meet you because I liked you. I killed all your friends. Uh, I sorry. wasn't. I wasn't really thrilled about it. They, it really wasn't me, technically, <laughs> by the way. I did uh, it because I didn't have a choice. Uh, well, what do you mean by that? Yeah, you know, Hideki, uh, how can I explain this? Uh, remember that malignant reference from earlier? <laughs> it's coming full circle, baby. Uh, you think it's a split personal- personality. Right, yeah, exactly. Point. So the guy's just crazy. And you can hear the voice, but what separates it is the fact that uh, he's like, he's like, just kill me, and she's like, I'm not going to kill you and take you to the cops. He's like, yeah, good luck. <laughs> and yeah. then the voice comes out You're again, right. and she can hear it. So it's not like it's a recording. Story. Or it's, it's not a recording. It's not story. It's not storytelling or anything for the viewer. And um, he ends up freaking out at her and runs at her, and she shoots him right in the chest. Right. And you're like, oh, shit, he's dead. I guess it works. Well, she she shook up because she was going to take him to jail or whatever. Man, this is the part when we were kids, we were watching this and we we're like, what the fuck? His chest starts bubbling and bursting and this giant fucking sack of shit bursts out of his chest and go and like lurches out next to him onto the side of him. Yeah. Again, malignant. And Basket she, case. And she watches this fucking baby fetus come out of this sack. Total recall comes oh, to mind. Man. The suck on, well, I actually hold that thought. It's got a weird Akira tie to it, too. Uh-huh. Because this baby is its own entity that's alive, and it also has telekinesis. As well, we find out, it's not it's a goat. It's not telekinesis, technically. It's it's pyrokinesis. Well, it's pyrokinesis and telekinesis. Does he have telekinesis? Yeah, because that's how he, they he shot those bolts without the crossbow, and how... Um, Oh, I didn't even think the about gate, that. The gate closed without yeah. the gate co- closed okay. without it. He's pushing uh Doom Mind around. shit is the yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. At least I think so. That's why I, I, I that's why it, it reads that way. I, I definitely was leaning more in because they purposely show, like you said, those those fireworks and there's a lot of explosions at the end here. I was leaning more pyro, but it could just be brain shit. General. I mean, if he has the if he has influence to make shit explode, I think he yeah. has the power to like make move him shit with his mind. Um, but that's that's his power. He's floating in the fucking air like Jesus or oh, something with his umbilical cord, and he's blowing shit up all around Nami, and the, he ends up like strangling her with his fucking uh, that umbilical cord. Was- Amazing! Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Uh, another member to the uh, the fucking squad, guys. The suckling, <laughs> yes! the baby orca peanut, <laughs> prepubescent mutant babies, yeah. prepubescent mutant babies. Got to make that fucking shirt now. Oh yeah, uh, moviedumpsterpodcast.com. <laughs> it's coming eventually. We got we got the orca baby. We got the suckling baby. Uh, now this one. Now this one. Now we got Hideki. Now we just need to add plutonium plutonium baby to the mix. Yeah, that. And, and then we, we have our fourth. We have our for a prepubescent mutant baby, yeah, and for I'm sure we're missing one. I'm sure the being. Was oh, the involved. unborn. Oh, the being was unborn. I'm yeah, sorry, it yeah, was, yeah. it was, it was hey, the being. Uh, we'll design it eventually. We've been talking about yeah. it on and off for years. It'll happen. There's a bunch of mutant babies. I mean, it could just be like ten of them. Who gives a fuck? There's so many of them. The army will grow once we get to monsters. <laughs> That's true. Oh my god. And we got to do the unborn. Well, time. And, you know, dead alive, obviously. Oh yeah, Selwyn. Selwyn is in there too. Uh, this has been your mutant baby uh, corner <laughs> minute uh, on movie. It's been a minute, so they got all those. There's fake, a minute. They got all those fake ideas. Do to get in the Chud Club, remember? They get the baby club, baby. <laughs> the mutant baby club. They're all, you know, even though they're babies, they're mutant babies, so they can drink at, with their bandanas on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're drinking hot milk at the bar. You know, some of them that are a little bit more disconfigured, they have a little acid and you know toxic it waste be, in there. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't slime; it was ooze. Right. right the know. peanut, the peanut gets like straight water, seawater in a cup. <laughs> oh, he gets like he gets like uh, seal blood or something, right? <laughs> That's the mixer, yeah, yeah. the Bloody Mary. That's his version. <laughs> It's version. I guess we don't ever find out. Richard Harris just scoops it into the fucking ocean. Can you commit a sin against a mutant baby? Can you commit a sin against a margarita? <laughs> I, I, we're going to find out. So, uh, Sunglasses grabs his brother by the umbilical cord. I, Dude. And like <laughs> shoves him back in, Rips him. him off and then <sighs> stuffs him back into the hole and then commits fucking seppuku on this motherfucker. He hits the ground and explodes like a fucking bomb. Dude, he puts it in, he cuts himself, falls to the ground, and ignites into flames. That's what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's just a charbroiled motherfucker at this point. And Nami's not even sure whether she should take a shit or wine or watch. She doesn't know what the fuck's going on. She's like, I guess I need to leave. So she starts to gingerly walk away like, I, I guess I won. Hideki, like, fucking... He 
Rio's full tar man. Re, re, oh yeah, <laughs> he reanimates the corpse uh. and goes after and like chokes her. Oh, yeah. And then and she, also like implies that he was just waiting for his brother to die the whole time, even though the whole time he's like, "Don't take my brother! Don't take my brother!" And he's like, "Well, drop that sack of potatoes." Oh, that's right, because she like gets she, she, the baby's like, "You killed my brother!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so she stabs him in the fucking eye with a piece of glass, and he goes out the window. A lot and, of eye shit. And the uh, the the burnt husk of her brother is strewn all over the place, like broken. But you don't see the the, the blob, the baby blob anywhere. No. So she's just like, huh. Cut to her in the hospital. Guess that's it. Oh, she has because he was burned. He had yeah. like these marks on her neck, and she like oh. rips these things like the burnt skin off her neck. That was cool. Yeah, uh, I like that a lot. But yeah, she wakes up a la like you know Friday or any of those other movies. Oh, this uh, is a million horror movies Friday, at the time. Fucking uh, American World from London, Hellraiser Two. There's a fucking cop in there, and he's like lighting her up a fucking cigarette, and he's he's like, yeah. So what happened? You were talking about this baby? There, there was no baby. Let's just leave that part no. out when you tell the there story. There was okay? no Jason. You know? Yeah. There was no boy in the lake. There was no boy inside that guy. Those sequels have nothing to do with it. <laughs> what sequels, Doc? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Hideki 2. Hideki Evil Dead Trap yeah. 2, but it's not the same thing. Don't worry about it. But you're kind of like watching. It's like, all right, I guess we're getting a little bit of an epilogue here. Okay, I'm kind of interested in this, but I expect like, you know, she beat him. It's done. Yeah, it's like the howling. She's t- yeah, 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 it's like it's like fucking uh, D. Wallace telling the story on TV. Exactly. Or, or and, Mrs. Doubtfire at the end, Oh, honestly. there you go. Yeah, I'm a man. Um... <laughs> In comparison of <laughs> disgusting horror movie out of Japan, Mrs. Doubtfire. Okay, <laughs> so she's telling them, she's on her fucking public access show talking about the the story. She's like, and she's then all about my, those dinosaurs, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raptor coming back as well. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> she, <laughs> She fucking, she's like, she's like, yeah, and then my, four of my friends died, and that's the end. Hope you enjoyed the show, bye. And then she's like in the back, like kind of just getting ready to leave for the day, and you're like, all right. Then she gets like a pain in her throat. She's like, ah, no, no, she gets a package first. Oh, I forgot about the package. Some like gives her a package. She's like, here, somebody dropped this off for you. said, you lost this, here you go. Okay, that's important, you're right. Yeah. She opens it up, it's the fucking lighter, it drops the thing, says RPD on it. (laughs) (laughs) She gotta get that back to the commissioner. Uh, or the captain, rather. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she she grabs her neck, starts freaking out. Uh, you almost feel like it's a PTSD thing at first, but then like her stomach starts smoking. Oh, dude, this is great because you hear the baby, and he's like, yeah. he's like, oh yeah, you thought you could get away or some shit. Yeah. Her fucking heart like explodes, and then she falls to the ground, and her legs are spread, and this fucking baby punches its way out of her vagina, and it's its whole head. And she's screaming and carrying on, and it's just like, mama. And then it fucking, like, It does an inverted freeze for, like, ten seconds. (laughs) It's like the end of Bride of Chucky. A little little bit, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hence why maybe you couldn't get a sequel uh, with the exact same. I mean, you could have made it work, in my opinion. The fucking baby's on her He's run amok. It's a reverse suckling is basically what I was going to say earlier, but I didn't want to didn't okay. want to say it yet. Well, it could do that that Jason thing where like he's right. he's still a fetus, but he's fully functioning and he could just go inside another person. He's a fully functioning fetus. One fully functioning fetus. I, With telekinesis. I, I do Thanks, wanna, Rucker. Yeah, I do want to see the sequel now just because even though you said it has nothing to do with it, I do wonder it's, just on a base level how they translate the second one. It has nothing to do with it, but it. Th- I believe the second one is about this woman who sees the ghost or has this image of this little boy and she commits all these murders and she wakes up not having any uh, memory of Oh, them. so like Malignant. That's why I said in the beginning. <laughs> Go watch fucking Malignant. It's actually pretty good it's even though we're fine. ripping on it. I liked it more than Joe, but it, yeah, it, fine is the key word. It's fine it's with not, a capital F. It's definitely not James Wan's best movie, but it's better than many other things that have tried this concept. In my opinion, watch Evil Dead Trap. Watch Basket Case. Better movies. Well, not wrong, but yeah, that was <laughs> Evil Dead Trap. Uh, kind of just fucks off from there. You get that Japanese credits on on this version. So again, I don't know who is who. So yeah, where are we putting uh, Evil Dead Trap? Uh, this is on the shelf. Been on the shelf ever since I saw it. But you know I just, it. Just, just needed a little reminder. <laughs> uh, when I watched it the first time, I did rate the first time for the show. I guess technically the second time. I did rate it a little higher. I, I For my personal rating, I gave it like a five out of five. But like on the rewatch, I was like, eh, it feels like a little bit more like a cozy four for me. Yeah. Just because I think that towards the end there, until you get to that third act, there is that like 20 minute stretch, which I do like. But it really slows down. Like, you kind of start to be taken out of the film a little. And again, like, the rape scene. I don't want to keep going back to that because I did just say earlier in the review that I thought it actually was done well. But that is also something I'm like, 
I get what you're going for, but that always is like in the back of my head. I'm like, eh, I could have done without that. But I also understand what they're going for. So it doesn't bother me that much, but I will mention it. The effects are amazing. The fucking acting's top notch, in my opinion, uh, for, for, for this kind of film, especially. Sure. Uh, and, you know, again, I said it many times in this review already, but the editing, the camera work, the music, even though that theme gets a little annoying sometimes, it is a very good theme, so I kind of let it slide. I'm like, all right, it's the 20th time in a row you played it, but uh, I'm tapping my foot. I'm feeling it. Uh, it's a very nitpicky. <laughs> and all around the world. Yeah, yeah. La, 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 la. I mean, I, it, it doesn't take much for my personal rating again. Like I, I talk about this occasionally on the show. I don't like to always go into that, but uh, little things will knock the rating down for me, but nine times out of 10, it's gotta be something pretty major. And again, it's my personal rating. It's on the shelf already. It's high up there regardless. Oh, yeah, babies. I'm just saying little, little nitpicky shit. Uh, highly recommend this one. Check it out on any version of these, I suppose. But yeah, this Blu-ray was a really nice transfer. You can't, I don't even think you can get this anymore. Don't even try looking for this fucking no. thing because I'm sure that this set is probably astronomical on eBay. Maybe and if get it, the DVD. I mean, if it's not, grab it fine. Mm. But when you have this beautiful new Unearthed Classics uh, Blu-ray out of Evil Dead Trap, just grab the Blu-ray. Yeah. Like I said, I, I think I said this on the episode. If I didn't, I'm saying it now. I did notice a couple times the subtitles did fuck up like towards like the hour 20 mark. Yeah. But maybe that was just what I was watching it on. But uh, super minor nitpick. I mean, maybe that was a, is a make or break for some people. And again, check it out for yourself. Maybe it was just my machine. <laughs> but uh, didn't did not ruin the experience for me at all. Uh, I, I feel like I'm starting to ramble a little bit, but I guess what I'm saying is this is a really fun film, and yeah, it's gross out, but uh, I I love it. And not to say I don't like gross out things, but uh, I guess I'll leave it there before I say something else really <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> Uh, this is on the shelf for me, 110%, dude. It, it was great. It was a lot of fun coming back to revisit. Um, I was absolutely baffled by how giallo the movie was yeah and like I, yeah. but like i i just didn't remember it like that yeah. and then watching it i'm like holy shit um that's not a bad thing at all no. um it, it it it's a it's a blender it's as it's a lot of things that i like mm. about different genres mixed it bl blended up into one movie and i really dig it because it's touted as a slasher and it, it kind of is a slasher but it's more like a paranormal mystery thriller yeah Again, I think the, I think the paranormal stuff is definitely window dressing, uh, but it is there. Uh, uh, I don't know what you would call I, supernatural. Okay, I, okay, fair enough. Supernatural. Yeah. No, excuse me, not paranormal. Well, I guess paranormal too. I don't know. D telekinesis and 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 crazy mutant supernatural? fetuses. Supernatural. Supernatural. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. I, again, I'm, I'm still not. You were saying you felt like it was paranormal at the end there, but I just feel like well, it was that weird psychic shit that's not hyper explained. Yeah, well, not a lot of it's hyper explained. Not a, bad thing not a lot of it's explained at all, and like. Was were they an experiment yeah. at this military facility? Because he says we used to run around here as a child all the time. Yeah. Was he exposed to something that fucked him up and turned him into that? He does say something at one point that he was uh, used to being around concrete walls all the time. So you're right, yeah, yeah. Like was he part of some kind of psy? Not a psyop, but like um, you know programs like uh, um, I always forget the fucking name of it, dude. The one that Stranger Things is based on. Oh, I have no Somebody's idea. Somebody's yelling at me right now. <laughs> I watch, I love Stranger Things. I have no idea. I, I forgot what, I keep forgetting what the fuck it's sure. called off the top of my head. Anyway. Something well, in that vein, though. Case in point is, um, the it, it is like dripping with atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Every every shot is intentional and the camera work is fucking fantastic. And like you said, the editing is just, it's razor sharp. It is such an enjoyable watch, but I will agree with you that um, once we get to the end there, there is a, there is a, like, a plot point happens and then nothing happens and then there's too much time in between right. those two points for me. Well, personally. it's like they kill everybody and they're like, well, we still have this other part of the story we need to tell with the main character. So yeah. here it is. But they didn't like the pacing's a little. It could have came a little bit sooner, yeah. but I understand why they did that so that they're alone. Oh, yeah. So you don't have any interference from sure. the other characters or, hey, where's that other character? What are they doing? It, it makes sense. But I agree with you. <laughs> um, it's fucking brutal and shocking and scary and. If you, again, if you haven't seen this in a while, or if you've never seen it before, you're going to be on the edge of your seat for a lot of it. And um, if you got the stomach for it, and that shit gets you hot, this is it. It's really good, and that's pretty much it. I, I, I've said I've said all the nice things I could say about this film. It's fucking great. Um, shelf, um, absolutely indefinitely. So yeah, if you've seen Evil Dead Trap, um, let us know in the comments what you thought of the movie. If you haven't seen it, if you want to see it, um, and what you thought of the episode. And like we said earlier in the episode, if you want some more Movie Dumpster content, including ad-free versions of the audio version of this show, 
Uh, head over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster if you'd like to support us for as little as two dollars and for no money at all if you're watching on youtube hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't we'd really appreciate it and if you're listening on your favorite podcast app do us a favor and leave that five star review because it really helps us reach a wider audience and you know get more dumpster dwellers for the community and as always uh, for updates on the show and for what's coming up on it make sure to follow us at movie dumpster on instagram twitter and facebook so that's it that's evil dead trap from 19 19- 1988, directed by Toshiharo Ikeda. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. 